Not much for our restful night. Yeah, it's two o'clock in the morning. I was woken by a bump. The thing is, is you, as a boat owner, you're pretty attuned to the sounds and the motion of your boat anchor. Anyway, I'm like, what is that? So as I come out of sleep, I find I could hear, I could, I could see a light, and I thought, oh, I didn't see a lighthouse because it kept spinning around. Anyway, I get out of bed, and there is literally a boat right next to our uh, bowsprit. There's a boat with three blokes on it, trying to anchor, re-anchor. I think they're trying to re-anchor. The only light they were showing was an anchor light. And if you were coming into an anchorage for the first time, you'd have a tri head on or your, or your lights or your kind of nav lights, deck lights. And the second thing is, you know, the navigation here is so difficult. You know, you've got two and a half, three and a half knots of tide ripping through here. Everywhere you look is rocks. You have to be a, an in, a lunatic, an absolute lunatic to, to do this to try and navigate to his to this anchorage at this time of night or in dark so i can only assume that based on the, the amount of chain i saw not going out when people came in in the afternoon they've just dragged their anchor they've uh, woken up to find themselves in a different position that that wasn't the boat that they that i don't think that was any of the boats that was near us when we went to bed last night so i went out with a torch I there's no damage to the boat it means nice though Tell me you're scared You tell me you're weak Ah, good morning. No more truth. Is this boat over our anchor? I hope not. Can't be bothered dealing with that this morning. I, offered, I asked him to move. I told him that our chains could be tackled. I told him it was right over our anchor. Now, if it looks like we do need to get to move. Be aware that once the boat is, when, be aware that when the wind is pulling up the chain, it gives the boat forward drive. Yes. So you can, you need to be in in neutral and be ready to reverse, not hard, but just bring the boat to a stop. I will have a fender there. And and take the boat hook so that I'm you. Going to, I'm going to extend the boat hook and I'll be tapping on his hull. Uh, try not to swear. Okay, I'll try. be tapping on his hull. Uh, <laughs> it's too late now. Are we good? Yeah, well, I'm ready when you are. I'll follow you through the black and the blue Whatever the mountain will climb to the next Honey, I'm with you through life and to death That was straightforward in the end. We'll close, but no dramas. I know, it's gorgeous. What a stunning morning. That sunrise is just crazy. It's so beautiful. That sun is so red. It's one of those crazy mornings where like you can't you almost can't differentiate between like the sea and the horizon it's all just kind of this milky gray color beautiful glad we got up early to go good start to the day goodbye france it's sad to be leaving but it's time and we had a great last couple of nights in france so you know that's uh it's always good to end on a high after three months of sailing France, we were finally departing this amazing country and one of the best cruising grounds in the world. South and North Brittany make up a cruising paradise, but despite the huge number of sailors who are lucky enough to call this part of the world their home cruising ground, there are very few livable cruisers. 
Many English, Dutch, German and Scandinavian sailors ventured down to France to enjoy a short summer cruise, but most liverboards that hail from Northern Europe choose to make a beeline for the Med or an Atlantic crossing and then the Caribbean. Certainly, that's the choice we made five years ago when we set off from the UK. And American or Canadian sailors that crossed from the East Coast also choose the Southern Med as their cruising ground of choice. I guess that's fair enough. The weather up here is undoubtedly temperamental with short summers and long stormy winters. However, that doesn't take away from the wonderful anchorages, the amazing food, the generous hospitality of the French people, the enjoyable challenge of navigating these tricky waters, and the sheer number of islands, rivers, canals, villages, towns, beaches, and anchorages to explore. We only scratch the surface during our time here, and we know that one day we'll be back to explore further. However, it was now time to turn our attention to Jersey, an island that's almost British, but not quite, they have their own government and currency, and the only island of all the Channel Islands that were accepting visitors, albeit on the condition that we quarantine for seven nights and two COVID tests when we arrive. It's knocking us sideways, so we can't make that waypoint, but in four hours the current will turn, so we're going to get four hours of the current knocking us that way and two knocking us that way. So by my calculations, we haven't got to do that much of a course adjust. The only issue is that there is a shoal here, so we really do need to be west of this cardinal boy. Six years away, we are now, according to our chart, back in UK territorial water. A strange feeling. I mean, obviously, from being over there to being here, there's no difference to us. It's just another patch of sea. But I suppose, well, legally, psychologically, so it's huge. Uh, we left UK territorial territorial water in uh, early June 2015. Yeah, nuts. Wow. So another 20 miles to go and we should be back, we should be uh, in sight of Jersey, able to call up Jersey VTS and uh, tell them we're here and to ask for uh, directions and then permission to get into the marina. Oh, that's exciting. I've been watching that shadow for a while and I thought it was just like a cloud but we're getting closer and it's kind of solidified into something that looks a little bit more land-like. So yeah, Jersey, found Jersey, we're here. As you can see from the state of this jib, it's basically just flapping around, very little wind. I and mean, you can see that from the state of the water, it's just like this kind of milky, smooth sea state. There's just like, not even a ripple. Oh, I think that's land. Is it land that way? I must say, I am excited about getting in. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about this five days of quarantine. Obviously it has to be done and that's totally fine. But I, I'm kind of torn between feeling like I'm like dreading being stuck in the boat for five days or whether I'm kind of looking forward to uh, the enforced break. Because yeah, there's loads of things that we can do and need to do on the boat, but we always uh, get distracted by exploring and sailing and doing exciting things outside. So time may be up on our procrastination. Jersey VTS, Jersey VTS, this is your Ruby Rose, Ruby Rose, over. Station calling VTS, go ahead over. Yeah, good afternoon Jersey VTS. We are a British, rest, a British registered uh, sailing yacht coming from France. Uh, we have already completed the pre-quarantine requirements and uh, were told to report to you about an hour before we got to the marina. Over. Uh, Ruby Rose, VTS, yeah, that's what we've done. Because we're now, yeah, we're aware you're um, all signed in and uh, follow the procedures uh, if you proceed towards St Helia. Uh, just uh, once you approach the harbour, just uh, give us a call and we'll tell the marinas and find out your birth. Over. Thank you very much, Ruby Rose, listening. 14. They're also polite here, aren't they? Very polite. <laughs> All 
Right, here we are. We are on the isolation pontoon. And when you say isolation pontoon, it is like just a floating pontoon. And we expected to be able to get into the marina and actually tie up to our berth as soon as uh, there's enough water over the seal. But someone's just approached us, some official from the marina, I think, and um, said, no, you're here <clears throat> on this pontoon for five days except then it was more like six days because day one apparently is as of tomorrow and then you have to also wait i think for your test to come back so it turns out to be like a week and uh we're like oh okay so how do we like plug into electricity and he's like oh no you can't do that there is no electricity on this pontoon we're like well okay what about like water and he's like no no water and when you're prepared for these things it's okay you fill up your tanks beforehand and you know you kind of, well, there's nothing you can do about the electricity, but our tanks are half empty. We can't really run the water maker in here. There's no wind because we're in like a really low in this harbor and there's plenty of sunshine. So that's one good thing. Um, but we kind of said to him, look, you know, there's a visitor's pontoon, like literally right over there. The bottom half of that visitor's pontoon is gated off. And we're like, please. <laughs> Please let us stay on the visitor's pontoon. He's on the phone right now to the Coast Guard, like pleading our case. He seems like a lovely and very reasonable man, but the, it's, it's not, not up to him. Not the thing is, when we spoke to Marina a couple of days ago and they explained that we were now going to be in quarantine, we actually said to them, like, will we have shore power and, and water? And they said, yes, of course, of course you will. And um, apparently that changed only this morning. He's just said that they did have a COVID positive case only. When did he say? Like yesterday? The no. last boat that came in. The sorry. last boat that came in was COVID positive. So I think that they're feeling like quite paranoid, which is totally fair enough. We're not going to be able to be as productive as I had hoped if we're unable to be um, connected to shore power. <sighs> but we shall see. Fingers crossed he comes back with some good news. Whew. Okay, hectic hour and a half. All right, we've been let out of the marina under the condition that we go straight to have our COVID test. No one seems to know where the testing's being done. The guy from the marina was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So we are walking around hoping that the email that was sent like three days ago is in fact correct and that they do have a testing facility here. We found Elizabeth Harbour Terminal, according to our email, that's where we go between 4.30 and 6.30. It's 4.30 right now on the day that we arrive. Not much else we can do. Okay, test done. It was done in like a tiny little hut over there just behind me. So we had to wait in two hours. Second test results are also clear yes. before we are allowed to leave the boat. So, okay, so I haven't updated you because we just literally rushed off the boat. So what happened was that our lovely man from the marina, so we spent probably a solid 10 minutes on the phone to someone and he came back looking all apologetic. And I was like, oh dear. And he said, okay, so we can put you on the visitor's pontoon or the waiting pontoon until you get your, he said, until we get our results back for the first test, Sydney, Nick. False negative. Alpha, yeah, so he said, when you get your negative result back, you'll be considered to be like lower risk. At that point, you'll be put into the marina, to your berth in the marina. And then once we get our second negative test, which will be done on day five, we can leave. And I must say, this is obviously brand new to everyone. So I think that there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly what the protocols are. So now we go back to the boat and hope that our negative result comes back sooner rather than later. English television again. I can't tell you how surreal it is to have English television back on our boat, if that makes sense. Like we have not had British TV since we left the UK five years ago. Really weird to be watching the BBC News in the morning. Anyway, day one of quarantine. So Nick is outside. He, I don't know what he's doing. He's kind of got this nervous energy going on. Uh, so Nick is, what is Nick doing? I don't know. We both have so much work to do. He's got, you know, we've both got a lot to do over the next week of isolation. Um, so we're definitely not gonna be bored. I've got a, a, like the pile of editing I have to do is just, I'm not thinking about it. It's quite big. It's a huge pile of editing. So I need to try and like get going on that a little bit. But even more than that, we have, you know, this boat to essentially um, ready for sail because the next stop after we leave the Channel Islands will be uh, the UK. You know, we won't be living on the boat, we won't be cruising once we're in the UK. It's, it's kind of going to be a matter of going to a marina and, and saying goodbye. 
And what are your jobs this morning, babe? I've got um, some high quality pottering to do. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed a lot of pottering so far. Seeing as we're here for a week, I want to get the code zero down so it's not getting UV knackered. Yeah, okay, so you're just, you're just doing a generalised potter. General potter, yep. followed by some minor pottering, <laughs> followed by um, some mid-level pottering. Yes, your Hopefully we'll hear from customs soon. Well, if we don't, we can do. No, nothing. We're stuck here. They have to come to us. Exactly. Well, maybe they'll say, come and see us. Oh, that'd be nice. A little outing. We thought quite clearly that the customs office was in the Marks and Spencer's delicatessen section. And while we were there, we picked up some lovely stuffed jacket potato skins and a bottle of your finest Chardonnay. <laughs> One of our followers just uh, bought us some food. <laughs> So what have we got? I don't know. Basically, thank you, Rodriguez from Portugal, who happens to be a Jersey resident. He saw us come in yesterday. I think he's the one that... Um... He was in the boat, yeah. He's in a little boat. Mm. He's like, I bought you some crevettes. There you go. Come on. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's fun. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, yeah, thank you to Rodriguez. So, he said, do you want anything else? He goes, you got beer and wine? I said, yeah, beer and wine we do have. That's we actually don't have beer. What? See what someone drops over the side <laughs> for dinner tonight. Maybe a pheasant, <laughs> a poussin, a spatchcock poussin stuffed with chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you better get on with your chores. I am. I'm getting on with my jobs. Oh. All right. Oh, sorry. Where are you going? Back to the sofa. <laughs> I must say, day one of quarantine so far is proving to be <laughs> rather straightforward and easy. We've just had, we've had one person drop off a packet of prawns for our lunch, which is just so, so fantastic. Thank you. Now we've just had someone else, one of our followers, lovely, lovely guy, drop off um, some Percy Pigs. I'm halfway through eating my first one. And some SIM cards. You know, ordinarily we'd go out and buy some new sim cards but we aren't allowed off the boat so someone came and dropped off some sim cards for us which is like huge so thank you robert yeah we owe you big time robert passport has now been stamped yeah customs and immigration literally just turned up and i tell you what i reckon <laughs> this must be like the friendliest place we've ever been guy from customs was literally like i can't believe that they're making you stay on the boat for a week and he was like <laughs> kind of mildly appalled and then he gave us his number and he was like, please call me if you need anything. I will bring you food, I will bring you beer, I'll bring you anything you need, give me a call, like seriously call me. And we're like, wow, that's so lovely. He's like, I literally live over there. I'm off for the next two days. I have nothing better to do than like bring you stuff. Let me know. So we just got our um, COVID result back. And it's negative 2020. Thank God. We just looked out the window and checked the water that's over the sill in the marina and it's two metres. If we leave now, we can get in. Let's go. Do you know where you're going? going to be our view for the next uh, what week six days something like that right, now that we have a negative result we're deemed to be low risk so they've let us into the marina which is nice of them I'm not sure that it's fundamentally different to being on the visitors pontoon for us because we can't go boat anyway but you know we uh, we're in we don't need to move we can see the outside world even if we can't be a part of it yet 